Hi there. Today I want to talk about authentication in Laravel. Laravel provides by default the web authentication for browsers. That way you can very quickly start interacting with your application. Also, the Filament PHP framework uses the web authentication to let your users interact with your application. Today I want to show you how to set up multiple guards and providers for different user types so that you can separate concerns further than adding every possible relationship and property to the user model. I just downloaded a fresh Laravel application and now let's cd into the example app and run sail up. Now it should be up and running. And let's open it in PHP Storm. And now that we have our product open, go ahead and run the final setup commands like sale artisan e generate and sale artisan migrate. By default, Laravel comes with the users table and the user model. And the user model is what allows you to authenticate into the application. As you see here, the user model extends from Illuminate Foundation Auth user. That will be a very important part of the tutorial today. So stick around and let's jump right into it. For this example, we're going to be building a recruitment platform with filament php so let's just start installing filament with these commands here and let's just call the first panel the admin panel this is going to be used for the recruiters so if i go to localhost i should see the welcome page Laravel and if I go to admin I should see the admin login and now for easier use let's go to the app panel provider and enable registration and also let's connect the database we're using standard MySQL because it's a fresh Laravel installation so MySQL here and the username password is sale and password. You can find these credentials in the env file. And I always like to set up the schema. So this is our Laravel application. And this is the users table. Right now we don't have any users. And by default, since we allowed registration and we didn't change anything in the authentication system we can sign in we are here as john doe and if we check the database we are in fact john doe now there are two ways in doing this um, the first way is adding a type column in your users table and have all your users end up in the users table but each of them being a different model let's start with the uh, candidates of our recruitment platform so we will say artisan make model candidate and let's say migration factory cedar and let's see so now we have a candidate model and it should also stand the authenticatable user but for now let's make it extend the user class i will show you what the actual problem is in a later step but for now let's just add a candidate user and also let's make a new panel 
Um, Tail artism element. Panel. I'm gonna call it market, or as a job market panel, and the pro there is also here. And I'm gonna allow login, gonna allow registration, and by default, this is gonna use user authentication and registration. So if I just go to market, I should still be logged in. If I sign out and create a new account under market. I should be signed up now as Jane Doe, but the problem is, as you could tell, is that I am a user. So we did extend the candidate from the user model. We did not write the migration file, but as you can tell, the registration went straight into the user model class, but we will be fixing that now. So the way you fix that is you go into your config file, into the auth config file. And here you have the defaults, but let's talk about the defaults later. First, you have provider configuration. The providers tell you which kind of authenticatable users you want the app to have access to. And here we're going to use the eloquent driver and the user that is logged in will be of the class app model user. Laravel authentication documentation, you can see here, user provider and custom user provider. You can use providers from a MongoDB database and for guards, um, you have the API guard, which is here configured as using JWT driver set of sessions. And we will be just cloning everything down to candidates. So this will be candidates and here we will be using candidate and for guards I'm going to make a new guard call it candidate and provider candidates and for the defaults I'm going to leave them as they are right now but you will see what the problem is very soon. So now that we have defined this candidate guard and the candidates provider, how do we actually make use of it? You go to the panel that you want to define for the candidates and then you say auth guard is candidates. So let's jump back into the application. We're still in the job market panel and we're signed out. So if I try to sign up as Jane Doe again, Laravel candidates does not exist. Sorry for that. I'm going to run say artisan migrate. And also just to avoid that error, I'm going to make copying this. Sign up. And as you can see, we are now signed up as Jane Doe. And the reason why we were able to use the same email again is because the candidate is now actually in the candidate's database table. So now let's find out what the first problem is. Let's make a model called positions. Let's also make a filament resource. And in the policies, position policy, everything is now set to return false. Change everything to be returned true because we do want the user to do whatever user wants to do this did not fail the reason it did not fail is because we here are asking for a user instance and we made the candidate inherit everything from the user so if you set it up correctly and make the user model 
not have any specific relations or properties and make everything based on the candidate, that should work perfectly fine. If you want to change that to be uh, not user, but actually the Luminate Foundation user. If we refresh here, it's going to fail because the policy expect the argument user to be of type app model user, but we received a candidate. So one way of fixing that is just to undo what we just did now and make it inherit everything from user. Then you should not have any kind of problems. And another way is instead of making it extend the user class, make it extend the Illuminate Foundation auth user class. And in your auth provider, you change that to also use the Illuminate auth user. The problem might be that your policies would need to be changed to not use that user model, but rather the Illuminate Foundation user. So if we refresh now, we should still have no problems because whatever we expect is going to be the Illuminate Foundation auth user, and that is being passed down here as well as the other. <coughs> Uh, user model. So let's test that by logging in again into the admin panel. And as you can tell, I'm still Jane Doe, but let's just go into the database and change Jane Doe. Now we are Jack the Ripper in the admin panel. And uh, let's also add the resource that we just implemented here to the admin panel so that we have something to test so we have this admin panel and the user can do whatever he wants now what you would need to do next is in your policies um, you can run something like Because we don't want the candidates to create any kind of positions in the recruitment platform. Also, we don't want them to be able to update them, delete them, restore them, or force delete them. So let's check that. I'm here in the admin panel. I can create a new position. So now that I have the two positions open. And if I go back to the market panel, let's just change the color of that market panel. Just so we don't confuse anything. I can view the positions list. I can view single positions, but I don't have any ability to interact with anything. So that is how policies work. If you want to use different auth guards for different kind of authenticatable users. Now, the only problem I see is that your policy classes might get bloated with if user instance of candidate instance of candidate you would have to do that check everywhere what you could do is add namespaces for candidate and another namespace for recruiter and then you would have every policy duplicate for each and in the providers you would need to implement the auth service provider and you would need to change the um, policy loader to load based on the currently used gate i have that as an example here And now in that application, I have implemented the auth service provider.
And in the boot method, I check the guest policy name using and give the model class, which will be in that case our position model. And then the position model will be given down to the app policies model class policy. And the namespace is taken from the get current guard. Get current guard method loops through all the implemented guards in the auth config. I have here the recruiter, employer, and candidate, uh, as well as recruiter, employer, candidate providers, which return all the different models. And then we run a auth guard check check if the currently authenticated user is authenticated to that current guard. And then we just return the guard and the guard is then used to define the namespace. And then that is how we automatically assign each policy to the correct guard. So if I turn that up, I go back to localhost. The candidate, they can scroll through all the open positions, but uh, as before, they do not have any allowance to change anything. If I would implement the candidate policy to true, uh, the candidate now is able to create actually a position and that is taken from the auth service provider. So the auth service provider goes through the gates that are defined in the auth guards, checks if it is currently logged in, and then gives us the correct policy from the candidate. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I will push everything to GitHub and make it available for you. So far I have a panel for Recruiters, which is called admin panel. It's using the auth guard recruiter. And I have a hiring panel, which is uh, used for the employers. And I have the market panel, which is used for the candidates. As mentioned before, we have made the recruiter in this example extend from the user model. The employer also extend the user model and the candidate also extend the user model because in this project, the auth guard was not defined to return the illuminate user, but rather it still uses the default. In the other example, I showed you at the beginning of the video so that the user's provider will return us an illuminate foundation auth user. And in this example, the candidate extends that user. And if we go a step further, we can add the recruiter, which also extends that Illuminate Foundation of the user, as well as the employer who is hiring. So check for yourself which option for you is the best. Do you want to go for extending each of them as the authenticatable class, or do you want to make all of them extend the actual user class? One benefit, of course, if you are using the user class is that if you use, for example, the Spachi role model user package, all of your three users, in that case, candidate, recruiter, and employer will extend to the user model, which will have the role and permissions feature implemented to it. Thanks again for watching this tutorial. Leave a comment down below if you liked it if you see any improvements and tell me what you think about Laravel's guard and provider feature for authentication. See you.